Now for my smart home build, I have invested in the Unify Protect system as it has no subscription cost, gathers evidence in an unfortunate event and most importantly, thanks to this HomeBridge plugin, you now can integrate this entire system into Apple HomeKit, add custom messages to the doorbell and the icing on the cake is that this entire system supports HomeKit Secure Video. Well, if you didn't know, as of Homebridge version 1.4.0, it now officially supports HomeKit Secure Video. And a big thanks to this developer, the Unify Protect plugin now supports this feature, plus bridges the gap in the Unify Protect ecosystem by providing native HomeKit support on par with what would you expect from a first party HomeKit solution. Anyways, if you're into smart home uh, DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't be shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now with these systems, you don't depend on vendors cloud services and everything just works locally on a network, which is what my smart home is all about, total local control. So in my case, the NVR is the unified Dream Machine Pro which does a dual job as a router as well as an NVR. Now you could be running your Unify Protect on a Cloud Cli Plus or a Protect NVR. Now with regards to the cameras and considering my new home build, I'll be using the G4 Doorbell, the G4 Instant and the G3 Flex. And also I'm considering to purchase the G3 Dome together with the Unify network. So for the PoE switches, I will be using the 60 ohm port switch that I have right here. Now with regards to the doorbell, the plugin supports two-way audio, ring notification support on your Apple TVs or HomePods. And most importantly, you can now customize the doorbell messages. Now we will definitely see this in the plugin configuration. So for all of this to work with Apple HomeKit and the plugin, we will need definitely the Unify Protect system that I have right here. Two, you will also need HomeBridge running on your network. In my case, it is already installed in this Argon One case with a Raspberry Pi 4. And don't worry, in the description, I also have installation guides to install HomeBridge using a Mac. PC or a Synology NAS. Now, as always, I've, all, I've broken down the video with uh, into four parts with the timestamps in the description. They are one, we're gonna look at the best practices to get the most out of the plugin. Two, we're gonna look at the plugin features and configuration. From there, we'll go into the doorbell configuration. And lastly, we'll go into HomeKit and do a little demo. So let's not waste any more time, like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. Now. I'll be honest with you, configuring the plugin is straightforward and simple. However, to get the best out of the plugin, let's first go through the best practices and we will use them in the plugin configuration as well. So number one, the developer has natively enabled some of the options to honor the intent behind the design and functional decisions Apple has chosen to make with HomeKit. Two, for an optimal performance and responsiveness of the plugin, you must run the plugin as a child bridge within HomeBridge. Three, create a Unify Protect local account for HomeBridge and provide an administrative role. Now, the administrative role in the Unify Protect allows the user to be able to change into visual camera settings, create live views, and do a handful of other camera things. Now, four, configure motion zones in the Protect app or web UI. It's the best place to do so put the time into setting up and adjusting motion zones in Unify Protect, particularly with the enhanced motion detection algorithms. Spend time in either the Protect app or the web UI and customize the sensitivity of these zones so that Protect only alerts when something of real interest happens from you. Five, enable notifications on all your Protect cameras in HomeKit Enabling notifications on all your cameras will ensure that iOS is alerted to when motion occurs and crucially updates the snapshots of the cameras in the background. Now, what this means for you is that your HomeKit experience will feel more responsive and fast. So those are the best practices. And now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and integrate the Protect system into HomeBridge. Now let's quickly go through the plugin features and understand what all functionality we get with this plugin. So first, we're gonna see that it gives you an easy configuration 
All you need is your unified protect controller IP address, username and password, which we're going to create. From there, we're going to get full HomeKit support for all of the Unify Protect ecosystem. So if you got your doorbells, your cameras, you will get that native HomeKit support. From there, you're also going to get HomeKit secure video support for all Unify Protect cameras. So besides the uh, local storage you have, you can even use your iCloud storage, but uh, that depends on you. From there, you're going to get blazing fast video streaming. So since all of the system works locally, it just works flawlessly in Apple HomeKit. And you can see all of those snapshots and videos feed streaming quickly rather than connecting to a cloud service. You're also going to get full Unify Protect doorbell support. So when you uh, press the doorbell, you're going to see the doorbell notification uh, on your Apple TV, also uh, hear the chimes on your home pods. You're also going to get two-way audio support, but there is a caveat to that. The two-way audio support, uh, you can talk to the person, but the only thing is you don't get the acoustic echo cancellation that's not yet supported. But other than that, it just works fine. From there, you're also going to get support for multiple controllers. So you have, if you have multiple controllers, you can add that into the plugin. And you're also going to see automatic countries detection and configuration of all Unify Protect uh, devices. So automatically it imports all of the configuration into the plugin. You don't need to add in any of the RTSP links. So uh, it really is helpful from that point of configuration. You can also see that the motion detection support is using the native uh, real-time notification API. So everything just works together. And you can also get motion sensor control within HomeKit. So um, the plugin exposes all the sensors that the cameras have the motion sensors. So that's basically a quick um, plugin feature uh, you can get. Don't worry, I've also left a link in the description where you can see in detail all of that information. So first things first, before we jump into the plugin configuration, what we need to do is go ahead and create that local user account within the Unify uh, ecosystem. So what we're gonna do is access our Unify UDM Pro. We're going to go to users and right here, we're going to go and click on add user. Now what you want to do over here is you're going to give it a limited admin role. You're going to call it, assign it as a local access control and you just want to give it a name. So home bridge and you leave these options as is. So you want to go ahead and now add in the local username. So this is the local username and for the password, you want to make sure you, you want to use a capital letter and some numbers as well. So that's the password. And then when you the application permissions for Unify Protect, you just want to leave it as administrator. So that's the only changes you want to make. And then from there, you want to click on add. Now, once the account is added, you will see that it's right here, home bridge, limited uh, admin and local access. Now from here, let's go ahead and access the home bridge. You want to go to plugins and what you want to do is look for Unify and then we're going to select the Homebridge Unify Protect, click on install. Now, once the plugin is installed, you want to go for Unify Protect controllers. You want to add in the IP address. So that's the IP address assigned to the UDM controller. Uh, the controller username is the one that you just created. So in our case, it's Homebridge. And the password is Homebridge 2022. Again, this is a local user account. Uh, other than that, there is no other settings you want to change. We will go ahead and see the doorbell messages and how we can add those presets. The rest, you want to leave it as it is. If you want, you can go and add in another protect controller. If you want to see other options, you can uh, tweak it. But as per the developer, leave it as it is to honor the intent and the, the functional decisions Apple has taken into uh, HomeKit and any other additional settings. So you want to leave this as it is. Now, once that is done, all you have to do is click on save. But before we go and click uh, uh, save again, what we want to do is we want to run this as a child bridge, which is part of the best practice. So we're just going to click on it, click now on save, and then we will restart home bridge. So we see that the plugin has found and connected to the controller API and the IP address. And we've also seen that it has gone ahead and found the cameras that I have. So it's kitchen, doorbell and gourmet. And now these are all of the names imported straight from the uh, protect 
web UI app. So if I go to my cameras, these are all the names assigned to the camera. So it automatically pulls that into Homebridge. So this automatically does that. You don't need to go and configure the name. So always put in the effort in the protect web UI or the app, finish all of the configuration there. And in the Homebridge side is just adding in the controller information to import all of the settings automatically. And uh, it enable all of the motion sensors. And just like that, that's how easy the configuration is. Now, if I go to accessories, you will see that uh, all of the accessories have been added over here. And for the doorbell, it automatically created the two switches for the doorbell messages. So talking about uh, the doorbell configuration, if we are to go to the doorbell settings, you know, these are the doorbell default doorbell messages together with the icons that they have over here. So this is automatic. You know, you could create a message over here and that will import a switch over there, but we can also do the same within Homebridge. So if you go to plugins, go to your settings, we can go to doable messages and you can add in a message over here. So I'll be there soon. And the message duration, we can keep it for 15, 30 or 60 seconds. The choice is just save. And you want to go ahead and restart the Homebridge service. Give it a couple of seconds. Now, once the service is restart, if you go to accessories, you will see that you will have one more switch for the I'll be there. It's right here down. So that's the switch that it has uh, created. Now to add the uh, devices now into Apple HomeKit is very straightforward. So what we want to do is you want to take your uh, iOS device as an iPhone to scan the QR code. You want to click on this, this icon here and you want to click on bridge settings. And all you have to do right now is open up the Apple Home app, tap on add accessory, and you would go ahead and scan this QR code. Then you want to tap on add to home, add anyway. So in this case, I'm going to add the bridge to my server location, continue, continue. So the bridge is already added to my home. And from there, it's going to go and locate the first device, which is the doorbell. So I'm just going to leave it in the garage doorbell. Now this is where the first feature comes in where you can enable the HomeKit secure video for this doorbell just in case if you want to use your iCloud storage you can do that right here. You can select stream and allow recording when so these are all of the additional settings you can apply right now for this doorbell. So continue. So that's what you can do. Chime accessories. So if you have any chime your home pause you can enable that. Click on continue and these are all of the switches that you can enable uh, to give those customized messages on your doorbell. So we're going to enable that, continue. Next one is going to go ahead and add in the G3 Flex, which is named as Gourmet. So I'm going to leave that in the dining room, continue, Gourmet, continue. And again, you also get the HomeKit secure feature enabled for this camera as well. I have another camera, the G3, uh, G4 Instant, and I'm going to put this in the living room. Continue. Again, you have the HomeKit secure video enabled for this camera as well. And if you want to enable uh, automations, we're going to not enable anything right now. Click on continue. Done. So now if I go back to my, to the living room, you see that the feeds have been automatically populated right here. It's that blazing fast. And that's how the entire Protect ecosystem is right now into Apple HomeKit with the native HomeKit secure video and all of the uh, devices are streaming blazing fast over here. But what are we going to do right now is we're just going to go back onto my computer, open up the Apple Home app, go to home and you see that all of the cams are set up over here. So I'm just going to go into my uh, hall um, TV. I'm just going to turn on the Apple TV from here using the remote app. And if I go ahead right now and if I press the doorbell over here, you'll see that you'll hear the chime on the HomePod pinny that's right beside me. And you'll also see a notification on the Apple TV. So that's the uh, Apple TV right now connected towards me. And we can see all the notification over there. So that's the feed right now then it's picking up right here from this camera on 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 to that so if i go back and if i go to my apple home i can see all of my cameras so those are all of my camera feeds uh, that are enabled right now from this uh, protect ecosystem onto the tv so it's that uh, simple 
Uh, one of the things uh, you want to also check out is that it also provides snapshots. Oh, oh, oh yeah. So right now on my phone, you will see that there was a snapshot. Oh, so if I open it up, it will open up the camera for me. So it's that fast. No cloud services. It's right now broadcasting over here. Now, another thing I want to show you is if you open up the doorbell, you go to settings, you can go to notifications. You want to make sure the doorbell chime, if you have HomePod minis, you can select which HomePod mini you want to uh, connect with. So um, you can enable that. And also talking about notifications, you also want to enable the allow snapshots in notifications. So if there are sensors, if you have any automation, the sensors will send you a snapshot or it will update the Apple Home app in the background. So you want to make sure all of these settings uh, are enabled and activity not notifications. So this one is device specific. If you want to receive notification on specific devices, enable this on that specific device. Also, another beautiful thing with this plugin is uh, I have my um, G3 Flex over here. So if I go ahead and open up the G3 Flex, and if I go to settings, I can turn off the uh, status light that's right here. So if I turn it on, it will turn on the status light. So that's another uh, feature you can do that right from the app. You can also go ahead and change the recording options just in case if you want to use a HomeKit secured video. And um, these are all of the things. Now for the doorbell, for the doorbell messages over, over here, what we need to do is you want to go ahead, create an automation and when a sensor detects something. So in this case, we're going to go to doorbell, tap on next uh, anytime, tap on next and you want to select that specific uh, message. So let's go ahead and select that specific message. So we have three of them, do not disturb, I'll be there, leave package. What happens when you run this automation is as soon as the camera detects motion, it updates the message uh, on the doorbell. So let's say for example, I will select do not disturb. Next, it turn it on and you will say done. Now if I go to test the automation, you'll see that the message is already broadcasting onto the uh, doorbell. So uh, when we go into test it again, we will see that it, it broadcasts the message. So I'll click on done. So just like that, that's how you can integrate your protect uh, system into Apple HomeKit and through the help of this plugin, you get this native HomeKit support as intended and in par with uh, uh, first party products and solutions. So that's how uh, it works. It works locally. It's blazing fast. You get notified. All of the Apple app notifications get updated. So do take advantage of this plugin. Do support the developer um, with the effort that they all put in for us. And also at the same time, if there's anything I can help you with, don't feel shy to uh, put a comment down below. And if there's anything I can assist you with, don't feel shy to reach out to me. And also don't forget, I've got more tutorial videos that you can use right now to add in more devices and other plugin tutorials. So until the next time, my friends, stay safe, have a nice day and happy automation.